Hi everyone, I'm Yo and this is Virginia. Welcome back to our YouTube channel, knowing, caring, and loving your lady parts. Although this video is not just for people with lady parts. So men, you can also join us for this video because this video is really our exciting first video on Pilates. And it is a more of a beginner's Pilates class because I'm gonna go over the fundamentals in terms of Pilates so you're aware of how to recruit the right muscles and do it effectively and optimally. Um, and also it is, of course, safe for people who have pelvic floor issues so and also any back or hip issues. Floor, so okay. I'm gonna be giving modifications. So thank you so much for tuning in and let's get started. <laughs> channel please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and share with your friends to support our channel and let's get started so leave little Virginia here just so she can just have a little rest um, so for those of you who've never done Pilates it's really important to understand the fundamentals of Pilates okay so, so just to recruit the right muscles bring them all in properly in particular the abdominal muscle group with the pelvic floor so as you recall in the other videos up above here with respect to the pelvic floor it's really important how you're recruiting the pelvic floor and this works really well together with the core muscles for those of you who have pelvic floor issues it's really important to recruit the pelvic floor first as I explained in the videos up above here like with prolapse um, because you want to minimize pressure pushing down and even if you don't have any pelvic floor issues it's just really important to bring in the pelvic floor men and ladies together so pulling in that squeeze in and lift towards the pubic bone and then keep going bringing in the transverse abdominus muscle which is the core abdominal muscle group that we're working it's the deep muscle and it's like a corset that goes all the way around if you see in that diagram up above okay and it's really important because it's the stability muscle it gives you posture balance it's important for people who have back pain hip pain pelvic floor issues it works with the pelvic floor muscles and how you recruit that muscle is think of a corset Okay, and as you exhale, you're pulling everything in and scooping or bringing your belly button down underneath your ribs, folding a book, zipping up a zipper, however you visualize, okay? So it's not a pushing out like this, it's a drawing in, okay? Um, think of what the muscle going all the way around. That's really important, so with respect to Pilates, is being able to recruit that muscle. The second thing is recruiting the muscles in the shoulder blade area, the interscapular or lower trapezius fibers. These are the shoulder blades here, it's at the bottom. So if you visualize with me here, shoulder blade here, squeezing them down and in. Okay, like this. So it relaxes these upper trapezius fibers, which we work way too much at the top, and bring these stability muscles in at the bottom. Okay, so you're doing kind of this. You're not doing a military stance like this. It's more avoiding this rounded posture and doing this. And the third component that's really important with respect to Pilates is your neck. You want to avoid this forward head posture, but we're adopting way too much now in computers. Okay, so you want to make sure your neck is more slightly knotted. But if you set here, your lower back and your shoulder, that'll all usually connect, okay? So if you bring this in first, your neck will usually come with it, and your shoulders, okay? So basically this is the alignment, setting your pelvic floor with your transversus or tab, I'm a lazy talker, so I like to call it TA or tab, setting those scapular muscles or shoulder blade muscles and your neck and that is preparing your torso so when i say preparing your torso you're zipping everything up setting your shoulder blades neck and you're ready to go with the exercises the other thing is breathing so remember the breathing video with respect to the breathing up here um, the umbrella breathing so breathing all the way around especially with Pilates, they emphasize the rib cage lateral costal breathing so inhaling through the rib cage and as you exhale you do a purse slip breathing and that's supposed to bring in the abdominals. I am bringing in the pelvic floor with the exhalation together. You're welcome to inhale, prepare, and then breathe out and then bring it all in together. But I like to sort of bring it with the exhalation um, as I've described in the breathing videos up above. Okay, so that are the main things with Pilates. And when I say prepare and breathe, that's what we're doing and we get started and we set with the exercises. So for example, when we're doing a half roll back you set so I'll say inhale set or just set or breathe in set your umbrella breathing shoulders neck so you're not doing this ok 
okay? And then you roll back, okay, and then come up. So instead of doing this where everything's sticking out, this is a bad posture for Pilates. This set of your shoulders, breathe out, and then come up is the way you want to do it, okay? Also with the half rollback, what you want to try to do is articulate through here. So let your abdominals roll your pelvis under and then your lower back follows like this. So you're not hinging, I can't even do that. Okay, so pelvis rolls, it's called articulation. And then you get your lumbar spine and then this comes up. So think of pelvis. And what does that is your abdominals. So exhale, inhale, come up. Okay, and again, you, if you have any kind of pelvic floor issues, make sure your pelvic floor is really engaged. First, breathing out, never holding your breath, rolling it down, and then coming up. So it's a roll and an exhale. Okay, exhale and inhale, come up through the top of your head. So you're getting this rolling, okay, like this, okay, of your spine. Okay, which is really important with Pilates because Pilates works on bringing in the core, but it also works on articulation of the spine or um, the flexibility of the spine, so to speak, articulating. Basically, you're moving each vertebrae, which are the bones in the spine, one at a time. Oh. So let's get started, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with a very easy Pilates warm-up. The one other thing I wanna explain with Pilates is you're working that tear or tab muscle, that transverse abdominal muscle in the diagram before. Often what people want is they want a burning sensation. So just remember when you're doing core work, it's hard. So for example, everybody knows a plank. When you're doing a plank, you don't feel any burning, right? But it's hard to sustain it and your form might not be good. So usually when you're bringing in core muscles, they don't burn because there's a different type of muscle fiber. They work all the time. So the burning comes from more of the six pack muscle, which is not as important for stability. So you're not, probably not gonna feel any burning today, especially because I'm not gonna be lifting your head because this is more of a beginner Pilates class. Um, and it's very safe for people who have prolapses. So you're minimizing pressure pushing down with the pelvic floor. So just remember that. And with respect to people who have prolapses, you wanna minimize pressure pushing down the pelvic floor as you recall from my videos up above with respect to prolapse. So remember, you're always engaging, pulling groin up, and you're always breathing out. So you're not putting pressure down the pelvic floor. And that's good for anybody also, and in particular, anybody who might have any back problems at all. Okay, so let's get started. We'll start off with a warm up. Okay, so for the warm up, let's just uh, embrace a little bit here, dropping your head down and think of Inhaling through your rib cage, okay? Remember the umbrella breathing in this video up here? So it's similar to that with Pilates. It's a little bit different than the yoga breathing, and I don't get caught up with the breathing when I combine them, but just, just breathe is really important so you don't increase pressure down in your back if you have back pain or your pelvic floor. So inhale and release. And just let, every, let everything relax, like your shoulders down. If you prefer to do this lying down, you're welcome to. This is more of a Pilates warm up. So inhale, get that umbrella breathing out to the side and release down. Let those shoulders go. So we're gonna roll down one vertebrae at a time. If you have a separation of your abdominals, go on your side like this, okay? Now I want you to set that pelvic floor, pull in and lift, okay? And keep going and remember that transversus abdominis. So think of the scooping or closing a book, zipping up so your belly button goes down. Keep everything stable and you're going to drop your right leg out without feeling anything shift in your torso, slide it down and pull it up, okay? So this helps, I'm just gonna move back here. This helps to warm up the hip and also what you're doing is as you're bringing your leg down, you shouldn't feel any movement in your torso because then you know you're stabilizing the muscle. If you're flopping all over the place like this, then you know you're not stabilizing, okay? And we'll warm that up a bit. So inhale, exhale. Exhale as you sort of slide down and up. You usually breathe out the hardest part of the exercise and then we'll do the other side. That's it, inhale, exhale, slide down. You can change the breathing around, I'm not as picky about it, to see what suits you. So whatever part of the exercise you feel the hardest, try to 
breathe out with that. Okay, so ideally when, and the hardest part is probably when you're bringing your leg out to the side. I shouldn't see this movement here. So everything should be stable as you drop your leg 45 degrees, slide it out and down. Good. Okay, so let's warm up the shoulders a little bit here. So I want you to, and I'll, I'll sort of sit up just so you, I can show you. So you're doing this kind of movement with your shoulders, okay? And as you do that, I want you to feel like you're not lifting your shoulders up and you're bringing those lower trapezius fibers at the base of your shoulder blade in that we talked about in the beginning. Okay, so let's do this. That's it. Now I'm a bit tight, so my elbows are coming off, but ideally you wanna feel as you come down, okay, you're squeezing the base of the shoulder blade, reaching up, arms are on the floor. I'm really tight through my shoulders and chest, so you'll feel like I'm lifting off. And then you're still stabilizing here, so you shouldn't have too much of a curve, but you're pulling in that zipping up, groin up. Okay, pelvic floor first. Whether you're a male or female, you still have them. Okay, and then down. So I'm lifting up. So I'm just gonna go here because I'm starting to lift up because my chest, my pecs are tight. And then think of squeezing the base of your shoulder blade. Good, okay. So let's do one of my favorite exercises, the bridge. Okay, so I love this as you know from my yoga videos and also my functional integration. So it's a great one. So let's warm that up. We're gonna do it a Pilates way. So with Pilates, again, set everything. So that's what you usually do. You inhale and set. So pelvic floor, core, okay. And then as you exhale, you're gonna roll up. One vertebrae at a time. So you're articulating or what you're doing is actually mobilizing each vertebrae, which are the bones in your spine one at a time as you peel off and then roll down. Okay, as opposed to this, do you see the difference? Here I'm using just my glutes to fire up, whereas here I'm rolling, peeling an onion, rolling up one vertebrae at a time. Good, hold here, and then exhale, roll. And you're stabilizing the whole time. Slide your shoulder blades down. Now, speaking about the breathing, remember, usually when you exhale, you engage the pelvic floor, so, it's sort of a little bit opposite to what we teach you with the pelvic floor, but you are engaging the pelvic floor with the transverse, this is the hardest part of the exercise. So I'm gonna change that around a bit. So inhale, just get that umbrella, and exhale, I want you to set the pelvic floor and the transverses and roll up at the same time. Inhale, hold here, exhale, Roll down. So inhale, get that umbrella breathing. Exhale, set the pelvic floor, zip up, and roll up one vertebrae at a time, like you're peeling those onions. Hold there, here you're getting your glutes firing, and then roll down. So try those two breathing. I kind of like that breathing instead with respect to pelvic floor. So inhale, set umbrella, exhale, scoop the pelvic floor and the transverse abdominis, and then you roll up. What vertebrae at a time, peeling that off. Here you're using the glutes and the hamstrings, and then you're rolling down. Good. Okay, let's go on your side. Um, so this one's really nice. It really helps to stretch out the chest that's often tight and respect to you, because you're on the computer all the time, and pelvic floor, right? You wanna optimize your breathing, and also this is really good to stretch your upper back. Everybody's so tight from the computer. I am too now with YouTube. So, so re relax your head down, and if you find you need to put something here, if you want a little bit more alignment, you're welcome to. I don't have anything risky right now. Set again, remember, your pelvic floor growing up. Okay, inhale, and then exhale. You're gonna just stretch that back. It feels really good, and I'm really tight. Now you want to avoid the flopping like this because you're stabilizing. So this, your hip should stay alignment. It should never flop back if you're stabilizing. And if you put your angle of your arm more like at 120 degrees, you'll get more of your pec stretch. Play around with the angle. If you bring it down here, you don't feel it as much usually. And you bring it here. Hold. That's it. And release down. Let's do that again. Inhale. Exhale, open up. I'm really tight here. I haven't stretched much here too lately, so 
and you can hold that for a few breaths. It's a great stretch to do. Remember, you're still stabilizing. Think of when you're bringing in the core that you're not letting anything flop. You're nice and strong through the torso. Okay. I know it may not feel like you're doing anything, but anybody who has a good posture, they usually are bringing in the core in what they call a neutral sort of setting. Hold. That's it. Open up. Exhale. Go a little bit further. And release. Okay. And let's switch sides and we'll go on the other side. So again, set your pelvic floor, your tab or transverse abdominis, zip groin up. So inhale and you're stabilizing here. Exhale, extend out, stretch through those pec muscles, chest. That's it, hold here. And release back down. Good. And inhale. Exhale. Open up. That's it. And release. Let's set one more time. Inhale. Keep setting your core. Exhale. Let that arm release as you're stretching your chest out, oh, if, and you probably feel tightened, bring it towards your head. You probably feel that that, it's called that two heads of the pecs is a little bit tighter than if you brought it to 90 degrees. And then release down, very nice. Okay, so let's go into the cat stretch. So cat stretch, of course, there's a yoga stretch for cat stretch, but with Pilates, you're using a little bit of core work to get into the cat, okay? Um, I'm going to do a yoga Pilates combination and then we'll bring in a little bit more of both benefits of these beautiful practices. So hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. Okay, so what you want to avoid, I know we, this is the cow in yoga, but we're going to not do the cow because we're stabilizing. So you shouldn't be, this is like when you're not stabilizing. So draw up the pelvic floor with the transverse abdominis. So zip everything up. And with your shoulders, see the difference with them collapsing in and I'm lifting up look between the shoulder blades. So that's a good alignment there, okay, as opposed to this and letting everything fall up. So you're lifting through here. So what you want to do is uh, exhale, you're going to roll everything up, go into the cat. And again, I'm really tight, so I'm not very good cat, but I'm using my abdominals to do this. As I inhale, I hold here, and then I exhale, I roll down. So let's inhale, good exhale, pull everything up. So I'm changing the breathing to work with the pelvic floor a little bit more. Inhale and exhale. If you're used to inhale preparing, setting everything, feel free to go ahead, but I find it works better if you inhale, get that umbrella breathing. So breathe out all the way around, then exhale, engage the pelvic floor with that scooping. So you're doing it more with the exhale. Inhale, hold, and exhale, relax. And that's the cat using your a Pilates cat. Inhale and exhale, roll up. Inhale, hold there and exhale, roll down. Good. And then I am going to cheat and go into, oh no, I'm not cheating. Sorry, I forgot. This is called a shell stretch in Pilates. In yoga, it's called a child pose. And of course, this is a great one to open up things with your back and then release down. Now we're gonna go into a half roll. So if you have any um, pelvic floor issues, don't go very far back, okay? Cause you're gonna increase the pressure down your pelvic floor, um, especially as a beginner. If you know how to control the pressure as well, you can go a little bit further, but I'm gonna stay pretty high up. Okay, so again, you're gonna set the pelvic floor, remember the big thing with the TA, the tab, okay? Set your shoulder blades down that whole alignment and your neck is in a good alignment. Okay, so you're gonna inhale and then exhale, engage everything and you're gonna roll back like this. So what you wanna do is scoop and not everything pop up like this, okay? Don't let your shoulders roll back, I mean, sorry, forward. Don't let your shoulders roll forward, you keep them back and your heck, <laughs> okay. So set everything here Roll those shoulder blades down and your neck is in a good alignment so it's not projecting forward. Exhale, 
you're gonna roll. And I'm just gonna go like this. I'm not gonna go too far down, and then I'm inhaling, I'm gonna come up. Okay, set the shoulders. Remember, exhale. Inhale, come up. So when you inhale, think about rolling through the top of your spine like someone's lifting you through the top of your head. So let's try that again. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, roll up. Inhale, exhale. Everything is gauged. And then inhale, roll up. So inhale, umbrella breathe. Exhale, set everything as you roll down. Or if you really feel like you want to do it with the inhale, you can. I'm finding it works better with the exhale, so I'm modifying. So inhale, get your breathing. Exhale, pelvic floor, tab, roll down a little bit. Inhale, roll up, okay? So of course, if you have a little bit more experience and you want to do, go down, you can go down a little bit further, okay? Trying to get that rolling here, scooping here, and then coming up, okay? So scoop, 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 and then come on up like that, okay? So let's do the oblique rollback, which is similar. So again, set everything. Pelvic floor with your core. Umbrella breathe as you exhale. Now your legs are further apart with this one, okay, a little bit. You exhale, if you get a rotation, inhale, come up. So again, if you have a prolapse, don't go too far. Exhale, maybe here, inhale, come up. Exhale, other side. Inhale, come up. Okay, if you want to go a little further down, make sure you're engaging, looking at the hands, sweeping. I'm not going that far down. Inhale, exhale. And that works your obliques, which are the muscles at the side, okay? And yes, Pilates is all about this graceful dancer thing, and I'm not a dancer, so. Inhale, good. Exhale, so remember, you're always breathing out the hardest part, which is usually going back. And you shouldn't feel any pressure down your pelvic floor, and if you do, just go like this. You're going a little bit down, so you're just kind of rolling. And if you have, feel you still have too much pressure on the pelvic floor, then try not to do that one. Okay, but it should generally be safe, because you gotta learn how to coordinate everything, even if you have a prolapse, depending on how big though. Okay, um, all right, so. The third exercise we want to do is we're going to go on our stomach and we're going to do the breast stroke. Oh, there was a hunting, oh, there was a hummingbird that was just there. Okay, so I'm going to show you actually first here. So you want to start with this position here. Slide your shoulder blades down, you're in a W position here, remember? Bringing those lower trapezius fibers, we're going to start in this position here. That's position one. And your legs are together. Slide your shoulder blades down into that W formation. Remember, you're bringing in those scapular muscles between the shoulder blades. Squeeze your legs together so you're working your inner thigh to lengthen the head. Remember, your torso is prepared by bringing in your pelvic floor and your transversus. And exhale, come up. Hold there and release down. So inhale, set. Exhale, come up. Inhale, hold and exhale, release down. And again, inhale, everything's nice and tight. Exhale, come up, lengthen through the top of your head. Inhale, hold. Exhale, release down. And let's do one more. Inhale, set. Exhale, come up, nice and strong through the core. Inhale, hold. Exhale, release down. Hands down by the side. Again, inhale, set everything. As you exhale, keep engaging. <sighs> Palms facing the body. Now, you don't have to go into this level two if you find it's a little bit too much because you're working the muscles in the back. The extensors, as they come up, inhale, exhale, come up. Lengthen the body, inhale, hold, and release down. And again, let's go into a shell stretch. Whenever you watch, you can go into this pose. It just helps to lengthen up through the spine. And again, stretching through there. Open up your knees if you want to get a little bit more stretch here. And let's go into your alternating leg, arm and leg. We'll start with the leg, and then we'll add the arm, and then you can go to both. 
If you find you've done this before, you can definitely go into your arm and leg. I'm just gonna go in steps. So hands on your forehead, slide your shoulder blades down. So even though you're in this position here, you're still recruiting those lower trapezius fibers. Okay, so let's bring our legs a little bit apart. Set the core, inhale, release. Okay, set your shoulder blades. Set your core again, so zip up, remember growing up. And then exhale, lift one leg up without rotating through the torso. Release down and exhale, lift the other one up and release down. So what you want to do is fire these little muscles here called multifidus. They're in between the vertebrae here. And they help to stabilize with that tab muscle. They're part of the core. So you shouldn't feel any rotation through your torso. So you shouldn't be wiggling along like this. So I'm exaggerating just so you can see. Okay. Nice and so Pilates and doing core stuff is all about detail and quality. So you want to make sure that you are keeping things very precise if you're trying to get that core firing. Because you can just do these and not bring in your core, of course. And then if you want to just add the arms, and it's in a V position, thumb up, slide your shoulder blade down, lift one up as you exhale, core is still tight, inhale down, lift the other one up, down. Okay, and often we're tight in this position, so this is a great one. Some people can't lift more than this. Try to get that extension of your upper back. And exhale, lift up. And then what you can do is add the opposite arm and leg when you're ready. It's a little harder. So exhale, opposite arm and leg. Inhale, release down. Still sliding the shoulder blades down. Core is still on. Firing that pelvic floor, transverse abdominis, that tab with the multifidus. I'm not going to go into swimming, which is a little bit more advanced. And again, any time you can just do the legs separately if you want. Okay, and then let's go into the swan dive, hands underneath the shoulders, legs are in a V position, slide the shoulder blades down and exhale, come up. This is a great one to stretch. Remember, don't put your shoulders up here, slide them down, you're holding it up here. That's it, and release down. So inhale, exhale, engage. As a physio, we do these for people who have disc pain, but for disc pain, you want to relax everything, which you can do in this position here. In Pilates, we're stabilizing just a little bit. Good, and release down. And you're going into that shell stretch again if you want. And hold. Good, how are you guys doing? I hope you're doing good. Okay, so a lot of times people want to strengthen through the plane of movement, okay, through the front and back, but you want to get that sagittal plane or the side plane of movement working because that's important because you're not always doing things this way. You want to stabilize side to side. So we're going to go into a modified plank. Um, in Pilates. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start off putting weight on our arms. So I'll give you a modification if this is too much on your arm. But spread out your fingers because that distributes weight through your wrists. Slide your shoulder blades down so you're not hiking up because this can be hard on your neck. And again for your neck issues you may want to modify. Okay and your palm is up. Heel is on the inside of your foot. Stabilize through your core again. Okay pelvic floor TA tab. Slide your shoulder blades down. As you exhale open up through here it's a great stretch keep that weight through your scapular muscles or shoulder blade but remember don't hike up towards the neck slide it down and release down okay so inhale set breathe exhale engage everything as you come up okay and this is a great stability one so how we can challenge that um, and i'll show you the modification in a minute okay so how we can challenge that is as you come up and you're stable lift that leg Okay, and what you're trying to do is stabilize as you're moving your leg. Okay, so how you challenge that is stabilize as you exhale. If you want a little bit more challenge, lift the leg up, 
and try to keep the torso still while you're lifting the leg up and down okay or doing circles this is a really hard one so stabilizing the torso instead of just moving around like this you could even just bend your leg okay and release down okay if we're modifying I'll show you the modification so you're going to be coming on your forearm Okay, you're going to shorten the lever so you're on your knees, stabilizing through here. Again, still setting the shoulder blade down and back. And then you come up like this. Okay, and this might just be enough. And release down. Okay, and again, exhale, stabilize through here. Again, if you want to challenge, you can do the same thing with your leg. Try to keep the torso still and try little circles. Okay, scooping through there. All right, and you can do both. So let's go on the other side. Again, opening up through your hands, heel through the front, okay? Palm up, start in this position here. Just so you get familiar with how much weight is going through your scapular muscle, open up and release down. Again, inhale, set, stabilize, exhale, come up, hold here and release down okay and if that's enough you can stay like that because that actually brings in a lot of stability of your scapular muscles and let's challenge that a little bit okay so stabilize take that back leg and again start with lifting one leg up you can do some circle stabilizing bend don't move the torso hold and release great and make sure, of course, when you're switching sides, shake out the wrists, because it does strengthen up the wrist, yeah, and could put, put a bit of stress on there if you have any issues. So again, if you have any wrist issues, you may want to go on the elbow, okay? And again, when you're modifying like this, it may be just enough just to do a little bit come up and release. Exhale, stabilize through here. You can bring your arm up wherever your arm is from. I like to do this, the reason why is because I like to feel the muscles engage and sometimes tapping on them actually it's called proprioceptive cueing can actually get them working especially if you have a diastasis recti which is separation of your abdominals which i'll talk about in other videos for postpartum mums or even even anybody who has a little bit of a separation of their abdominals okay so the next exercise that we want to do we're almost done is a side leg lift lift series which i love and it's a great one for bikini wearing <laughs> now that lockdowns are actually loosening up and everything thank god for that right um, but we'll just start with the simple one all right we'll probably just start with a side leg lift series one and two and again i like the side profile because okay so i'm going to put my hand um, on my head just to or you can come down like this so again stabilizing through this is a side leg lift series Okay, you can put your hand, I put, let's put our hand here. So side leg lift series, set the core, inhale. Okay, exhale, come, and then inhale, release down. And as we're lifting the leg up, try not to move the torso. The whole idea is you're not just gonna la 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 la. I'm just gonna do this. It's a side leg lift. It is a side leg lift, right? If you need to put your hand there to stabilize a little bit, you can, but you're doing this and you're trying to feel like you're not moving. You're completely still, inhale, and lengthening as you're lifting okay it's harder than it looks right to try to be accurate there and again I'm, I'm trying to give some proprioceptive cueing there okay and the next one would be inhale all right and then you're just doing a little bit of circles trying to stabilize and again trying not to move the torso and if it's too hard slow the circle down that's easier than going like that <laughs> all right and then release down good and let's stretch a little bit through here and then switch sides i'm just going to do those two of the side leg lift series if you know the other ones you can go ahead and do those but just keeping it simple today so again stabilizing through the core here and stabilize inhale exhale so inhale exhale and again feel free to change the breathing as long as you're breathing and you might find it's harder 
to go up. So exhale and inhale down. But I prefer inhale and then exhale. I'm not as picky with the breathing as long as you're breathing. With the pelvic floor, you usually do exhale as you engage. So, But then, of course, you're not always, you have to be able to hold, right, the pelvic floor through activities. Okay, good. Keeping the torso nice and still. And then let's inhale, and then let's do a little bit of circles. Keeping that torso still. I'm going to go slow. Try not to move. And you're just breathing through this. And release down. And then again, stretching through here. Gonna work on a little bit of stabilization. So this might seem easy, but remember when I was telling you about Pilates, right? Most of the time when you're, if you're just working your core, and this is a real, uh, physio exercise too, and it's really great for people who have diastasis recti, which is the abdominals separation because you're just focusing on your transverse abdominus. So you're going to recruit the pelvic floor and that tab muscle. Remember, zip everything up so you're not moving your torso. And then as you exhale, you're going to lift one leg up. Okay. And of course, you can do this without doing anything. But what you're doing is trying to lift the foot without feeling any things like you're lifting up your back or you're shifting your pelvis. Okay, so as you exhale, lift one leg up and down. And then the other one. And nothing should be popping up here either. Exhale, inhale, and it's a very safe one for prolapses. Now, if you find you want to get a little bit further, again, this should be okay for prolapses. See, um, make sure you're getting in that pelvic floor with the transversus, lift one leg up and then bring it closer in though, okay? Which is easier and then stabilize and lift the other one up and then lift, exhale down and then exhale down without shifting. And it's actually quite a hard one to do, okay? So that's a really good one to isolate to train the transverse abdominus with the pelvic floor working and you don't get any burning, but it's hard to lift that second leg like this. Okay, so I'm pulling it in, lifting it without popping or anything lifting in my lower back. You shouldn't feel any change in the pressure of your lower back when you're doing that. And then switch sides and then stabilize. That's it. And then, and even controlling it on the way down is really important. So if you want to make it a little easier, you can add a stool. I have a book because I'm at a cottage. And make sure that you're not lifting up here through your back or anything's moving when you're doing that. So remember, stabilize, pelvic floor, groin up. Lift the leg up without moving. Bring the knee in a little bit past 90 degrees. It's easier. And then this is the hard part when you lift the second leg. So try to lift the second leg. I'm going to move my hand so you can see without popping up. See how I popped up there? and then release down, I increase the curve. So you wanna maintain that curve and then release down. So everything should stay the same, nothing should pop up here. Okay, and you're not lifting up like this or wiggling around as you're moving here. Okay, so that's what you wanna do and really feel what's happening. You could even, again, poke along here. This is great for people who have postpartum, that abdominal separation making sure that you're maintaining that tension and down. Okay, and that's really important is how you're stabilizing. And the whole thing is too, you can also put your hand here and feel the pressure. So set everything, feel that pressure and make sure that pressure doesn't change as you lift that second one off, especially that you're coming off your, your hand but you don't want to focus on that pressure that you're pushing it down because then sometimes you can just push down using your glutes and not use your abs. Now, if you've done Pilates before, what you could do is do a dead bug one too. This is not as much beginner and you can just tap down like this and then tap down without feeling any change in your lower back, no popping. And I'm not gonna add the arms because it's harder. If you know how to add the arms, go ahead, but I find adding the arm and leg to it, even this is hard. 
And if you bring your knees in closer, it's easier. And if you tap on a stool too, that'll decrease your range of motion. So to finish off, I would usually, because I actually teach a yoga Pilates class, I normally would do a cool down in Shavasana. You're welcome to do that. But let's just finish off into your shell stretch. Finish off in this position here. Breathe in and release. And I want to thank you everybody for coming today to this practice, this Pilates beginner practice. Gives you a good idea of the fundamentals and basics. I'm going to combine a little bit of yoga, just release your thoughts a bit. If you find, feel free, if you want to lay on your back to finish off, that's fine too and just release the hips. I actually really love this position because it relaxes my back, opens up my hips. And then you can add any stretches that you want also. Like a spinal twist. I know I'm adding things. It's all part of what we do, right? Which is really great. I'm not holding it, but you're welcome to hold it for Pilates, for yoga. For those yogis out there, you can add a hamstring stretch if you want. Or just stay breathing where you are. And I'm just going to come on up. So I hope that went well already. Um, again, if you have any questions, please comment below. That was a very beginner Pilates class. But it's really important as a physiotherapist and also, also as an instructor, it's so important to know the, the correct technique for anything, right? And the fundamentals. And a lot of it is actually specific details, getting that core working, um, making sure that you're being very particular in, in terms of your stability. So Virginia and I, thank you so much for tuning in today to our first Pilates class. And please comment in the section below and let us know any videos you want us to upload because this channel's for you. So thank you so much for tuning in everybody and we look forward to seeing you again soon.